Crow, which is right next to Chick-fil-A. Oh my gosh, big news. <laughs> She's... I can only go to one, so <laughs> here we are. No problem. All right. I'm sure you guys probably know why we're at Bass Pro Shops. It's obviously because we're out here looking for fish and tackle, but we are looking for particular items for tomorrow's fishing video. So Jay and I are going to be doing some crappie fishing. We're going to do some slab crappie fishing. We're going to slab hunting. So in order to pick out the slabs from the big, from the big school, you know, just to key in on the big fish, we've decided that we're going to be using some small swim, swim baits. <laughs> swim baits. We're going to be using swim baits to try to catch these bigger crappie. We have a couple of them in mind that we're going to be using. Um, let me turn this camera around. We'll show you which ones we're looking at right now. So we're looking at these power bait sick fishes. They're three inches long, which is, in my opinion, not too big at all to catch crappie with. So we have these six, we have these six fishes that we're looking at. We also have these little tiny spark sheds right here. Mm. Those are pretty tasty looking, those little three inch spark sheds. They're seven bucks though. I'm not sure if I'm feeling seven bucks for six swim baits. Four bucks for, how many are in there, five? Five, they ain't too bad, right? And they're durable. I know these. I know these for a fact are really durable. I've used these before, and they're in power bait, and they're in power bait, which I like too. And they're in a little clam package also. So I think we'll probably get some of those. But there is another bait over here we gotta check out. Okay, this here might be the big player. These are some rage swimmers, 2.75 inch rage swimmers. They're sold out of this color. This is one I wanted. This is that pearl white. But I think. We can do sexy shad, or we could do ghost shad. I like ghost shad. What do you think, Jay? You like ghost shad? I like it. You like sexy shad? I think they'd both be good. I do too. But let's go with. Let's go with ghost shad. Okay, let's go in there to get these for sure. So we're gonna get ghost shad. Six forty nine. Six forty nine. Do it for the slabs. <laughs> and let's definitely get some uh, of these sick fishes. Yeah. I don't know which color though. I think I like this color. What about this one? Chartreuse, Chartreuse Shed? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so I think this is what we're going with as far as swim baits we're gonna <laughs> use tomorrow. We got the Rage Swimmers, Ghost Shed color, and we got Chartreuse Shed, and these Power Bait, uh, Sick Fish. Three inches and 2.75 inches. They're both about the same size. I'm, I'm getting excited. I'm getting real excited. Now Hopefully we need jig heads. Ones. Yeah, we do need jig heads. Let's walk over here and get some jig heads. Okay, now we're looking for some jig heads that we're wanting to pair up with these swim baits. Uh, they're, they're, you know, about three inch size swim baits. We're looking for like an eighth ounce head and like a number two-ish hook on there, a number two or a number one. I've seen a couple right here. I got these orange ones right here. Orange has been good out there. So got some orange ones. Might be good. But I have my eyes on these ones. Right here. These little minnow heads right here. They're just plain lead. They have a pretty long shanked hook. Looks like they're a number two. Yeah, they're like a number two size hook, and I think that that'll pair up nicely with these swim baits. Actually, guys, you know what? I found exactly what I was looking for and what I wanted. These are some little Berkeley little half head. They're like uh, mushroom style jig heads, like Ned Rig heads, and uh, these are an eighth ounce, and they have a one aught hook on there. It's like the perfect size for these swim baits. This is actually I'm gonna get, and they're cheaper. They're only four bucks, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be only getting seven of them, but this is what I want. Let me get these. It's getting kind of laid out. You know, we went to Bass Pro kind of kind of late. We got there like at 8.30 and only had a couple minutes to look around the store because they were closing at 9. Got back home, we were working on an edit, and now I'm messing around and I'm spooling up some new line. I also got a Bass Pro shop. Supposedly this is going to be the best braided line for spinning reels of all time. I'm really, really excited about this. This is Berkeley X5 braided line. I've been wanting to get my hands on it for a while and it just now released in stores, you know, like last month or it just released last month and then when I was at Bass Pro I was excited to see that they had some on the shelf. That usually isn't the case. They usually don't have stuff in stock that fast but this is the X5 braid. So I took all the line off my reel and I'm going to spool this stuff up. This is 10 pound test. What's really cool about this is that the line is supposed to be super round. There's a core already inside the line. This is a five carrier. I'm not sure if it's a five carrier line, but it has uh, five strands of line going around that main core. So it should be really good. This is engineered for strength. And what's it say? Maximum strength and abrasion resistance. Sounds good to me. And we were gonna give it the test tomorrow to see if this really is the best line 
best braided line for spinning reels ever created. Okay, so when you're spooling on braid to your spinning reels or onto your bait cast, it's, it's really important to have like a monofilament or a fluorocarbon backing. So I have this already on my reel. That allows, I mean, that eliminates any chance for your line to be slipping onto this, onto the spool. Just, you don't want that to happen. It's kind of dumb when that happens. And uh, just to connect, I'm going to tie that little Alberto knot. Let it pull it together. We're solid. So this is a 10 pound test. It has like the diameter of like four or six pound test line, like monofilament, I believe. So I can put a whole bunch of this. I can, I'm gonna use like pretty much the whole spool on my line probably. It's 165 yards. Eh, I'm not gonna use that much. We're just gonna fill the whole spool up though. So when you're putting on fishing line on your reels, you want the line to come off the spool counterclockwise. So it's going on your reel clockwise, but you want it to come off the spool counterclockwise, and that's just gonna help eliminate line twists and the in the future when you're fishing. So usually just flip the spool over, it's gonna come off counterclockwise and go onto your reel clockwise. And I like to thread it, you know, through a guide on my re on my rod. It kind of keeps everything all together. Just hold it tight and just reel it on. Since this is braided line, it has uh, no memory really. So you're not gonna really worry about line twists anyways when you're using it, which is something that I really, really like about using braided line. Okay, this is a 2,500 size reel. Holds a good bit of line. And this just make sure I have plenty of line on my spool because once like I cut it, you know, I can't put any more on there. I can always take off some. Bust one of these dudes out. I like that Berkeley has these things in a the little clamp package now. It's super nice. Look at the old tasty little morsel. A lot of action on it too. Like the previous six fishes in the old Havoc line, they were a little bit stiff. They still had great action. Okay, I'm gonna thread it on this little mushroom head. It's got a really cool uh, bait keeper. These really hold lock down your plastics. Okay, let's see where it comes out. Okay, you want to thread these things. You want to thread these things on straight. The straighter they are, the better action they have, and that means more fish catches. More slabs are gonna want to eat your bait if it's on there nice and straight. Looking good. Okay, we're gonna push that down. Oh yeah, boss. Now tell me, if this little dude dangles right in front of a big old slab crappie that he won't eat it. Tell me right now, tell me in the comments right now that he won't eat it. I'll prove you wrong tomorrow morning. I'm gonna hook this up. I think Jay and I are gonna chill on the couch for a little bit. Even though it's late, we should just go to bed, but still feeling kind of wired. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting up early. We're getting up like at, like at six o'clock, 5.45. We wanna be out there as soon as the sun comes up. We think that that's gonna be about the best time for a good bite tomorrow. And uh, man, we're just too excited to go fishing. We haven't been doing any fishing the last couple days. I'm starting off with the rage swimmer in the morning. Heck yeah. The rage swimmer versus the sick fish. Yeah. I think they're both gonna be pretty deadly out there. I do too. So this is just a little bit smaller of a of a package that 2.75 inches, but and it's got a little bit less bulk to it. But I think that they're both gonna catch fish. I'm so excited. Time will tell. <laughs> Cannot wait for the So morning. excited we can't go to sleep. I think we should stay up all night. No, it's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> Good morning guys, we've made it to our launch site. I just, I just messed up. I just pushed Jessica's kayak down the uh, slope right here. As you said, I just put it down and it just slid on this little icy uh, layer on top of this grass and just went zoop, right out in the lake. So, my bad. Good way to start the morning. I think Jay's gonna go get her kayak while I park my truck. Yeah, got it. Whew. Okay, I parked my truck. I'm walking back over to Jessica. See if she retrieved the kayak. That was so dumb. I just slid the boat out of the back of my truck and it just went straight down the side of the bank and went straight into the water like so fast. Oh gosh, she just passed me. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. I've never seen that before like that. I mean, I've seen pelicans flying around, but I just haven't ever watched them fly around in the sunrise like this all silhouetted like.
Okay, we finally officially made it out into the cove. We're about to start fishing. The cove is unusually silent this morning. There's not a lot of boats in here. It's usually pretty, pretty much shoulder to shoulder out here as far as packing in boats to one fishing area, but it's nice. There's only two boats out here. Um, I'm not sure if that's a signal that there aren't any fish still hanging out in here or not, or what. Maybe it's just the weekday and nobody's out here fishing yet. But uh, anyways, we got our swimbait set on. We made it out here with no problems. Jay's back there getting rigged up, getting our anchor set up. I've got my swim bait here. Uh, we're dealing with some below freezing temperatures this morning, so it's not really a big deal. It's like 28 degrees, it's probably gonna get above freezing, but we might be having some difficulties uh, with our guides freezing up this morning, so it might be annoying. And also, before we get fishing, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let you guys know that you, I'm not sure what the fishing side of this is actually gonna look like. We're kind of worried about it because by some mysterious wonder, Jay and I's GoPros, like just for some reason, just quit working. Like on the exact same day, on the exact same fishing trip, I'm not sure if it's some sort of weird like internal software update that shut them off, but I cannot get them to come on using any technique that there is to get the GoPros to come on. So that's also been making our fishing videos kind of tough recently. But anyways, we're going to get after it. We're going to see what we can do. We're going to try to catch some fish. And we will see you guys on the other end of the line once we hook up with something big. Hey, I thought we were fishing for big ones. <laughs> is that even a keeper? <laughs> I don't think so. It's you got not. the sun behind just to hold them up so I can see them. Dang gum! <laughs> what are you doing, Jay? Where are the big ones at? Oh I'll well. Find them. Toss them back. Yeah. It's bigger than yours. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like a pound. Pretty good sized fish. Nice. What do you think? Should we keep it or let it go? Uh, we'll let it go. Check it out guys, there's my first swim bait crappie of the day. Choked that Berkeley sick fish. And that little that little mushroom head has a really sharp fusion hook on it, which is really, really nice. I really like it. It's about a one pound size fish, maybe a pound and a quarter. But uh, I think today we're going to be letting these fish go. Just cause we don't have a cooler, we don't have a bucket on us. We have a little stringer, but I think we're gonna let these fish go today. I'm sure if you get caught again, you'll probably be kept, but not today. Awesome. Is that a drum? That drum hit it as soon as it hit the water. I thought I had a big old crappie loaded up on that swim bait. That's all right. He still fought good. All right, let's get you back in the water. Don't be silly. <laughs> Check it out. I just caught my second crappie of the day. Another one about a pound. And he just barely, barely got that little sick fish uh, swim bait in his mouth. Hooked him right there. That little hole is right there. But it's a nice little fish. It's number two. The bite has been really, really slow. Like I've caught total. Today, I've caught these two crappie. I caught a little drum and a white bass. So let this fish go. Peace out, guy. We just made it back home from our fishing outing this morning on the lake, and although we didn't get skunked, the bite was not very good. It was tough. It was real tough. We only caught, what, three crappie? <laughs> three crappie and like three drum, a white bass, and I snagged a shad, so it wasn't that great. And it was super tough to film because our GoPros are broken. Yeah, yeah, we realized this morning <laughs> like how important these little cameras are to making fishing videos possible. But we are working towards getting some new working GoPros so we can get back to making these fishing videos that y'all are accustomed to seeing on our channel. But until then, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button for us today. Leave us some comments in the comment section. We read all the comments you send us. We love reading all the feedback you'll have for us on the channel. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all of our future fishing and outdoor adventures. We're, We're Cole and Jay, Jay, and we'll see you on the next one.